well, it's the morning after and you go and pick your car up because you didn't really want to drive it with your knackered Zen and headlamps. Now, this is a particular case study that actually happened to me quite some time ago now. And it involves a lint bus failure. But first of all, I thought I'd cover some basics of what goes wrong with these. You might not always have a lint failure. So let's take a look at that now. System is very simple. You have a headlamp switch input into the headlamp control module. That's a little computer what's inside the car. You can just see it underneath the headlamp control module diagram. Then you have the lint bus signal from to left and right headlamp control units. And these are also little computers. And they're responsible for quite a lot of things, including in this car the swiveling of the motors because this has uh, adaptive headlamps and the module's name is also a bit different it's called an SMC module and in this particular car there's two of them and the lens signal should be exactly the same on both which makes troubleshooting that bit easier because you can actually scope or take a voltage measurement with your multimeter on the working headlamp which would be the right one and then compare it to the left so the system has a D1 SSN on bulb it's your usual bulb you'll find in mostly everything nowadays. And basically, there's nothing really much more to say about the bulb. It's a finite component. It'll wear out. And that's nothing more to say about that. The bulb contains xenon gas. Again, sometimes you'll see that they become yellow and discoloured. It's a sign that all's not well and you should basically get rid of it because it's aged. Capacitors also, they can sometimes go wrong. I've had them where you have a flickering bulb and you actually think it could be the ballast unit, but... Lo and behold, you change the xenon bulb and it fixes the flickering problem. And the ballast itself, of course, this is the thing really that ignites the bulb and keeps a stable power supply to keep the thing going, really. And they do fail. Often they fail because of water leaks internally due to cracks or just failed seals on the headlamp. Beware of that. Swapping a ballast is only a temporary measure if you've got a water leak inside the headlamp. So here's another layout. You've got the headlamp and the bulb and the ballast. And if you do have a fault code indicating many, many failed ignition attempts, don't mess around. Take the, take the headlamp bulb from the other headlamp and just swap it. It's just easy as anything. These are over 100 euros each for a premium bulb, so you don't want to buy one really, unless you're pretty damn sure that it's a faulty bulb. Just swap it over, even though it's a bit of a pain to get to, especially on certain cars. Ballast unit is the second thing you should swap. These are the two common reasons for failure, or the fault code of too many ignition attempts or failed ignition attempts there can be other things of course with failed ignition attempts you could have other issues but usually if you have other issues you will have additional fault codes uh, indicating that there is more than one issue again if you only have the failed ignition fault codes bulb first ballast next now then on our particular car we had a faulty lin bus now don't get scared it's one wire and this wire goes from the headlamp control unit in the vehicle and it goes directly to each headlamp there is an individual pin for each headlamp they are separate circuits and here's the fault code comes with smc unit left disrupted 006140 so you know straight away there is no limbus communication so this is what we're going to test we're going to test the wire and components in between the headlamp module on the left and the SMC module on the right. That is all we're doing. Just those two components. That's it. Nothing else. Of course, in the headlamp, you do have a wire, but we'll come to that later. So initial diagnosis on the left affected headlamp showed battery voltage. Shouldn't have that. The battery voltage is one thing. Lin voltage on this car, although it does fluctuate a bit depending on the load of the circuit, it's around 9.5 volts. Here's a view when I actually fixed the Lin wire because that's what the issue was, we had just over 9 volts, 9.5 volts, which is about right. So that was the reason why the headlamp wouldn't work. Once that, once that was fixed, the headlamp switched on normally, and I was able to erase the fault code. So here's the wire on the headlamp module, blue and white. That goes directly from the headlamp module in the car, and it goes to the back of the headlamp. And of course, in the headlamp, you have a hard wire from that connector, down into the where the SMC module interface, and that obviously powers the SMC module, that module Limbus system, and obviously creates uh, a way for the signal to move up and down it. So the red trace there is a very nice Limbus on our working right headlamp, and the blue one is a complete flat line to 12 volts. Now, don't pay too much attention to the axis; it was zoomed in, and it's not quite to scale. But I can assure you that blue line means you've got a short to 12 volts. And this car was really, really, really straightforward because all we had to do was go 
to the actual unit with the wire disconnected in the car, and we had nine and a half volts. As soon as we then check the wire disconnected from the headlamp and the headlamp unit in the car, we still had 12 and a half volts on it, or in that case, 13 volts battery voltage with the charger on. So you know when you disconnect it both sides and you've just got kind of a dead wire, but you still have a voltage on it, you know for a fact you've got a shorted wire. It's just a case of chopping it out, finding the brake, and running a new wire in, and all was well with that system. And on this particular car, you might be surprised to learn there was nothing wrong with the bulb, nothing wrong with the palace unit, and essentially other than that one limb bus wire, there was nothing wrong with anything else. The SMC module was perfect, no corrosion. So why did the light switch off? Well, you'd be surprised. The reason for that is quite simple. Imagine the SMC module controls the swivel modules inside the headlamp. That's what it does. If it cannot control the height in particular, and the light is stuck in up position, it's going to blind oncoming traffic. So a bit daft in my opinion, but BMW decided to uh, basically switch it off. So you'll actually see when you expand the fault code in this, it says headlight switched off to prevent dazzling oncoming drivers. That's the reason why it switched it off. Not because of the Xenon, not because of the ballast, nothing wrong with it at all. It was inhibited from working because of the SMC module. SMC module really hasn't got anything to do with Xenon. Um, it's a feedback system that if it doesn't work, the Xenon will be prevented from being switched on via the lamp module inside the vehicle. And that's it. It's amazing. One wire affects so many different things. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this. I love making it. It was great. Thanks for subscribing. My last video did really well. Everyone seems to like it. And uh, yeah, keep, uh, keep liking, keep sharing. Please press notifications. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more free fault-finding content and knowledge building. See you soon. Bye.